Hey, what's up everyone? It's Steph from Steph Lee Films. In today's video, I will be unboxing this amazing black magic mystery box which arrived in the mail today. So hello again everyone, as you can see I have in front of me today 3 Blackmagic design products I mean 4 Blackmagic design products The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera or BMPCC Both the 4K and the 6K version As well as the 5 inch video assist monitor here with me Remember I talked about getting some of these cameras and the video assist to pair with the A10 Mini Pro during the circuit breaker? and see how the ecosystem of Blackmagic design products complement each other. 
Before I start, first let me have a disclaimer on this video that you're about to watch. There are tons of videos out there doing the BMPCC 4K versus 6K comparison. As you guys know by now, I'm not a pixel peeper. I do photography and videography as a full-time profession and most of the opinions I share in all my videos are in relation to how I would use them professionally in the real world scenario. And in today's video, I will be talking about them in relation to pairing with the A10 Mini Pro for live stream. And in a nutshell, I will be sharing my honest opinions on which model you should get for the A10 Mini Pro setup as the best value for money. So now with that out of the way, and without further ado, let's dive right in. I will be splitting this video into three parts, the first being a direct comparison of the BMPCC 4K versus the 6K model, and which one you should buy for your A10 Mini Pro live stream setup. And then I will do a first look on the 12G HDR video assist. And for the last part, I will talk about why using the BMPCCs and the video assist are recommended for the A10 Mini Pro setup for my live stream. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. So first up, resolution. The 6K model obviously shoots in 6K and the 4K model in 4K. But since we need to do an apple to apple comparison, Let's just say that the 6K is sharper than the 4K model if you do a zoom in comparison. Well, the reason this is so is because the 6K is being downsampled to 4K and naturally it packs in more information as compared to the 4K model. Well, we don't usually do a scale in of 400 to 800% and if we plan to use both cameras for live streaming, as I've always recommended, the maximum resolution you should set for live stream is probably 1080p. Otherwise, you'll need a faster upload speed for smoother streaming and many other problems that may result in streaming in higher resolution. In any case that you need a 4K streaming, both cameras will do an equally brilliant job on that. So in my opinion, especially for live streaming, I will put the score to be tied at 1-1. Next, I want to talk about the mount. The 6K model here has a native EF Canon mount, while the 4K model uses a micro four thirds mount. This itself would mean that the 6K is limited to only Canon lenses. Well, of course, you can add a speed booster or an adapter to be able to use other lenses, but here we are talking about native mounts. The 4K model takes in both Olympus and Panasonic Micro Four Third lenses. So in terms of lens choices, the 4K is a clear-cut winner here. So the score, 2, 1. Next, I want to talk about the crop factor. The 6K model has a crop factor of approximately 1.6 times, while the 4K model has a crop factor of approximately 2 times. This means that for a similar focal length shot on your lenses, the 6K model shoots in a wider field of view. In my opinion, for live streaming, this doesn't really affect your setup because if you use a zoom lens, you can adjust the focal length to fit the framing of your live stream. In this example, I'm shooting at 35mm for the 6K model and I have to go a bit wider to about maybe 28mm to achieve somewhat a similar field of view. So for this comparison, I will give it a tie which makes it 3-2. Next up, batteries. The BMP CCs have a reputation of poor battery life and both the 6K and 4K models suffer from the same common issues. Both cameras use the Canon LPE6 batteries and while I haven't tested this yet, it is reported that operating in normal, typical settings, the batteries will run for about 35 to 40 minutes. For live stream, this will not be very ideal, so again, there are tons of solutions out there to solve this battery life problems, like connecting a constant power source. Anyway, in a standard live stream setup, we usually connect the camera to a power source because you cannot depend on the stream running purely on battery life because if the battery runs out of juice and goes off, the stream goes off. And I don't think you will want that to happen in a live stream, right? So in terms of battery life, I think this is a tie again. So the current score, 4-3. The next thing I want to compare which interests most of you most, I would believe, is price. So the 6K retailed for about $2,500 US when it first came out. And the last check, it cost about $2,000 USD right now. 
The 4K model costs about 1300 US dollars when it first came out and it is also the current price right now. So between the two of them, that's about $700 difference, which is about 1000 Singapore dollars. For me personally, I haven't seen anything in the 6K up to now, again, specifically related to our live streaming setup that justifies spending the additional thousand sing dollars, which I think you can put it to good use by getting a good lens or even get the A10 Mini Pro. So in my opinion, the 4K is a clear winner in this category of pricing. And I also want to add on that for the price of the 4K, it is pretty insane what it can do right now. So the current score will be 5.3. I will add my comparison here because from what we have seen so far in terms of value for money, the 4K pretty much trumps the 6K. However, not to diss the 6K completely, it performs better in low light situations and you get sharper images when down sampled from 6K to 4K resolution. So if you bring this comparison test out of the live streaming world and into the world of making movies or short films or feature films, you may want to consider getting a 6K model for future proofing. But then again, I want to counter that as well because Blackmagic Design has a reputation of releasing updates and upgrades to current models of cameras and equipments too often. And next year and the year after, something more awesome will come along. So again, in my personal opinion of using, changing and upgrading cameras over the last 12 years, between the two cameras right now in front of me, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K wins. Okay, it's close. Now for the next part of this video. I have with me in my hands the Blackmagic Video Assist 12G HDR 5-inch monitor. I will just briefly talk about the basic functions of this monitor here and how it suits our live stream setup. For a more detailed look of this monitor, I will be doing a separate video for this which will come up shortly. There are three screw threads here at the bottom and the top of the monitor. On the right side of the monitor, you have the power on button, a 3.5mm audio jack to plug in your headphones, an SD card slot for you to record your video to, and a 12 volts power that you can connect a power source to. I want to talk about the audio jack which is very useful for this setup because you can now monitor the audio from the A10 Mini Pro, which this function seems to be lacking on the console itself. If there's audio video lag, you can hear it and correct it on the spot. I've talked about this audio latency problem in detail and how it was fixed by Blackmagic Design in the video up here. The SD card slot allows you to do a recording of the video and the USB-C port at the bottom of the monitor also allows you to connect an SSD to record the video as well, similar to the A10 Mini Pro. On the other side of the monitor is an SDI in and out as well as a HDMI in and out, pretty standard for field monitors. You can also power up the monitor using standard Sony NPF batteries and they are hot swappable, meaning to say you can replace the batteries even as your monitor is running. The monitor is touch screen and is pretty sensitive, so good job on that as well. My quick thoughts on this so far. I like that it has a recording function on the monitor so that when you do a live stream, other than the recording going on on the A10 Mini Pro, if I know that the video assist is doing a recording as well, I will feel pretty secure and safe because then I will have two copies of the recording. So in case one fails, I have a backup copy. There are a lot of other functions within the menu. For example, codec options, zebras, focus assist, etc. as well as the ability to add in a LUT to the monitor to give you that cinematic look. However, these functions will be covered more in detail in a separate video as, again, I'm trying to keep this segment closely related to how it will assist us in our live streaming setup. So my thoughts, this is a pretty good monitor with well-built metal parts as the casing and has a good weight to it. However, I haven't read or seen any software updates to this monitor that specifically increases its usage or functionality as a studio monitor in a live streaming setup in a Blackmagic design ecosystem. Maybe sometime in the future. But my takeaway, this recording function is definitely very useful for a live stream setup. All right, here we are at part three of our video segment. As you can see, the outlook is a little bit different because 
what I have in front of me right now is the Dream Blackmagic Design ATEM setup. Why do I call it the Dream setup? It's because right now everything you see here is being connected using a Blackmagic Design product. So what I have in front of me, camera one, is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The one I have here, which I'm going to swap the view, is this one. Yes, this is a BMP CC 6K, 6K camera here. And you can see right here, which I'm doing a recording of the multi view. As now you can see, it's a multi view. So this is the five inch video assist. And I have this connected. Let me change this. Yeah, I have my A10 Mini Pro connected. Uh, I'm recording right now, as you can see, into this SSD. So what happens is uh, this Ethernet connection is being connected to my MacBook here, MacBook Pro. And you can see I am in the ATEM software control. So let us cut back to one. So what I have is the ATEM software control, which you can see as I have more functions now. Okay, the latest updates, the recent updates to the BMPCC cameras have allowed the cameras and the ATEM Mini Pro to communicate with each other. In the past, it was only one way, similar to my Panasonic GH5 and the Canon 5D Mark IV, which I use uh, frequently as well. Those cameras are only one-way communication, meaning to say input from the camera to the A10 Mini Pro and that's all. But right now, with the recent updates to the cameras, the BMP CCs, I think it's the update 6.9. With those, with those uh, software updates, now there's two-way communication, meaning to say I can control the cameras just using my A10 Mini Pro or the software control panel. So I'm going to do a quick one right now as I have had problems setting this up because the BMP CCs are infamously known to have poor battery life. So right now they are running on the Canon LPE6 batteries and not on a connected power source because I don't have that right now. So yeah, I'm just going to go jump right into it and uh, show you. So for the most obvious uh, change that you can see now is that the cameras now have a red light here when the camera is live. And the camera which is on standby or preview mode which is uh, camera two right here behind me, is actually, there's actually a green light here, which I'm going to show you. So there's a green light. And then when I cut to camera two, which is here, you can see, I'm not too sure if you can see, but uh, there sh it's showing a green light on camera one, which means that uh, it is on preview mode. So what's so good about this is that, for example, if you have a presentation and you have two cameras, one probably is usual camera one, showing a wide view and camera two probably shows a side view, a crop B-roll of your speaker or your pre presenter. Then he knows which camera to look at when. Exactly, see what's happening now. Now this camera one is showing green light, but yet I'm talking to camera one, but I should be talking to this. Okay, so this is a real life scenario of what's gonna happen because the red light indicates that it is live and the green light indicates that it is on preview mode. So the presenter will speak to the camera, which is the one with the red light. Now we are talking normally and properly. So the one at the back here, it's on green light and it's on preview, whereas camera one is red, live, and I should be talking to this camera. Okay, next up, we're going to show you um, on the ATEM software control. Now we can assess this camera tab here, right? So many functions you can control with this. For example, this button, which I found it pretty useful because once I set up the camera to be somewhere away from me, this A button is the autofocus button. So when I click on this, it's focused right now. So I'm just gonna do a quick, quick example to show you how fast and accurate the autofocus is. So now I'm going to go to the camera and put myself out of focus. All right, you can see right now I'm out of focus, but with the click of this button, it automatically, very quickly, 
hunts focus and it locks focus on me. So also I'm going to do a quick run through of all these buttons. Basically this is lift, gamma and gain. All right. And as you can see now, cam one is on air. So the red, um, red panel is very obvious. So everything is showing cam one. So the presenter or the speaker will always know to look at camera one. Okay, for this uh, part here, it's the Da Vinci color corrector. You can actually expand it right here to do a bit of color change. As you can see right now, it's shown if you like purple or you like bluish, I don't know. So this can be corrected. This is something like a LUT being applied to the camera which is being broadcast live. So you can actually do an adjustments to your preference to make it look cinematic. Um, or you can just reset it here. So you have options like contrast. You can play around with contrast as you can see here. Right now what we're doing is live. Uh, saturation, you can have more saturated or desaturated look. And the other buttons are pretty much self-explanatory. So there's also an option of tweaking this, as you can see. This is something like the curves control. The, what do you call that? You can control the curves. So what happens is if you tweak it up here, it's going to show very exposed, contrasty, over, over contrasty look. And if you tweak down here, it's going to show. So all these settings right now is, uh, is pretty much the first time I'm playing with the black magic pocket cinema cameras so this again can be tweaked and um, set to your personal preference so i'm just going to stick with uh, going to reset everything and this is going to be the standard that you're going to see right now so yep with this you can come back and cam 2 so similarly for cam 2 if i want to do a cut to cam 2 which is the one right here I can also tweak the settings here right now, as you can see, and probably do a quick autofocus to make sure that, yep, I'm correctly focused in focus. So, yep, that's about it. There you have for the ideal Blackmagic A10 MIDI setup. Again, camera one being the BMPCC 4K, camera two, BMPCC 6K. Right, right in front of me is the A10 Mini Pro connected to my MacBook Pro using the Ethernet cable and adapter. And of course, I have a SSD recording as well as right in front of me, the video assist, which I explained earlier. It gives me a, it, it gives me extra confidence because right now I have this whole streaming thing being recorded on my A10 Mini Pro. I also know that I have a backup copy of this recording on my video assist, which is being recorded to the SD card inserted in. So, yep, I hope you enjoy this particular segment. So there you have it, the ultimate Blackmagic Design ecosystem setup for live streaming, the Pocket Cinema cameras, the 12G HDR video assist, and of course, the A10 Mini Pro. I feel that the BMP CCs were initially made to target the filmmaking industry with lots of function like shooting in Blackmagic RAW, ability to add LUTs as well as using the video assist as a great complement to such a great camera. But what really struck me and heads off to Blackmagic Design who probably saw an opening in the live streaming market and especially in this global scenario and situation and introduced a software update that made the pocket cinema cameras truly usable in the studio as a studio camera to complement the A10 mini range of switches. I hope that in this video, I have given you a quick idea of how these Blackmagic products complement each other so well and how it can increase your live streaming productivity and quality. Before I end this video, I would like to say it really means a lot to me if you found any of the information in this video useful and if you can give this video a like, or share it with your friends so it encourages me to continue making such awesome videos for you. On the other hand, if you hated this video or dislike it in any way, feel free to give me a thumbs down and let me know in the comments below what you disliked so I can work on my future video content to bring you something that you like.
If you want to learn more about photography and videography on this channel, or hear about the latest tech news or how to get the A10 Mini Pro working awesomely, like this episode, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.